picture I photographed of him that was used as a cover has smoke circling both of his eyes in a circle and he's drinking his whiskey and you can see that he's happy. Uh, I'd say that probably is my favorite visiting moment. Ready for coffee? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah, nice and hot. Good. When's the last time you were there? We drove by when we came back from Europe. Yeah. We didn't go in, but they, we met yeah. everybody was outside. We had a nice chat. It'd be a busy day today. Yeah, what do you want to do today? You want to go to the Benton House again? <laughs> Let's go to the Benton House. <laughs> oh, it's been a long time. Benton was a folklorist, and he painted American folklore. Well, you better get your shoes on. You want to put them on there? Okay. Is this okay? Yeah. I met Tom Benton when one of his students, former students, uh, took me with him to go visit him. Benton had two students that he claimed were his best students. One of them was Gene Pyle, who took me, and the other one was the dribbler. Pollock. Remember the dribbler? Pollock. 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 Thank you. I couldn't hear you. Uh, so we went over there and we visited, and Tom and I talked, and it was apparent that it was the kind of relationship that he liked, whereas he did the talking, I did the listening. He'd love to talk. I mean, there's no question about it. You ready? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm having fun. Well. <sighs> Keeping in mind that I'm a photographer, he welcomed my coming. And he encouraged my coming. And I met that encouragement. So we talked about everything under the sun. Let we just range the world, and uh, we talked about everything except his art. You know, in other words, I couldn't say why did you put that Indian there. I mean, that was that was taboo. I was not to hang any kind of a question on any of the artwork they place. So this went on, and we visited with each other for quite a few months. And as I said, he enjoyed it, and neither one of us was counting the days or the hours and having fun. He would have visitors, and he enjoyed talking about people. So when the visitors left, well, then he wanted to unload on me what he thought of them in reference to his work. This is the committee from the River Club coming over to take a look at how he's coming along, and they report back to one of the meetings. They want to make sure he's working on it. And this gives uh, Rita, his wife, who handles all financial details, uh, to smooch with him, you know, and get a feeling, get a feeling of what she can get out of him. Oh. Because it's not the same for everybody. That's Rita fleecing the public. She's, she's the only person that talks money, talks price, talks anything. He, he sits mute, and that's Mert in the kitchen with Rita Benton discussing what we're going to eat when Mert cooks, and Mert fixed chicken kapama. That's right. That's what I fixed that night. They were at the age where, I mean, they didn't go out. I mean, well, they really wanted us to come over and do it over here. She wasn't comfortable driving a car 
at night, the headlights bothered her. Yeah. I was eight months pregnant in that photograph. <laughs> With who? Our son, George. It was a fun night. I look at the table in there, and I mean, you know, I remember being there, sitting there with them eating, and we just had a fantastic time that night. We really did. They were fun, yeah, it was great. Well, they liked it. Yeah, they did, they loved the Kappa Ma. It's so a good recipe. they've never eaten before. <laughs> offered me a drink only once. There was a NBC correspondent. Edward R. Murrow. Right. Anyway, he came to visit and did an interview of the family. And uh, I was surprised and pleased that NBC sent Benton a, uh, a case of his favorite bourbon. And his favorite bourbon was very expensive. <laughs> and. Uh, he gave me a shot and I gulped it down. He says, you don't get any more of that. <laughs> That's sipping whiskey. <laughs> That's pretty much how the studio looked. It was uh, probably, his easel light was a little bit stronger. He didn't want anything over there distracted him. So he's got it low key, dark everywhere, except on that easel. And that keeps him focused. Well, got a beautiful day for it. Do you remember what time of the year it was when you started going over there and taking uh, photos? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's fall. Fall? Uh -huh. Inspiring place to work. <laughs> it really is. Great studio, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, does it look the same to you? Huh? Mm -hmm. It looks just like he's just left it. Look at this here. Yeah, and it looks like he worked on a portrait here. Yeah. It makes these paints over uh, there. It's wonderful light, isn't it? Yeah, great, it's a great light. Over here are some of those little uh, sculptures. He'd model the things out. Oh, yeah, they, they, those aren't up, but he'd model them, the whole mural up, and then he could walk around and look at the perspective, look at the overlap, yeah. pick the angle he wanted. He liked to work. He liked the work. He liked to work. It wasn't a job it. with him. No. It was something he really enjoyed. That's right. We 
Were you around when that was being done? Yeah, I took the photograph. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, gosh. I made some adjustments so the mirror would work for us. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Uh, she wanted a portrait of him. He wanted the $25, and I wanted a photograph that I could live with. <laughs> So, all so three you of, all worked together. So all three of us worked together. <laughs> and they all three loved it when they saw it. I loved it when I saw it too. Well, it tells a story.